Although I didn't get a lot of pictures on uh, day 13 here, um, which is actually uh, January, Wednesday, January the 11th, um, I saved uh, I saved a bunch for the full moon. So enjoy this day. Um, this was uh, just after midnight. I did these pictures. Um, so it's pretty late for me because I did have to go to work on Thursday. But I do have trouble with sleeping, so I figured, well, while I was awake, I might as well go out there and take some shots of the moon. Um, again, we've um, been having these like hazy days where this uh, thin layer of clouds seem to be, you know, uh, lingering above us in the sky. Um, and of course, you know, Florida is full of humidity most of the time. So, you know, we got a lot of humidity here. And I'm assuming that this was like uh, a thin fog uh, that was above. Um, and I, I did make these pictures, uh, you know, a little longer so you get a little more chance to look at them. Um, and, you know, as I zoom in on them, you start getting more detail. Like I say, you know, you're always getting more detail the more you zoom up in on them. Um, but you got to get past the brightness of the moon. Because when you take a picture further away from the moon, um, it's pretty obvious that the glare of the moon will kind of block you out. Um, like this one, you don't get no detail and it's just a big haze. Um, and this is how these cameras work. Um, you know, and I, I try to present this to people for, you know, ones that claim that the clouds are going behind the moon and sun. Um, I try to explain that this is the amount of light that's going into your camera. Um, so as I, you know, zoom in closer, I start getting more detail without the glare of the moon, you know, glaring me out, glaring out the camera. Now, on a lot of these, I do use that compensation exposure, and I turn it down so I don't get that big glare. But if you're filming or taking pictures um, from a distance, you will see how that, that glare will cause that illusion um, because it burns right through those thin clouds. Like, really, right now, I'm looking through this thin layer of clouds, as you see here. Um, and these, this thin layer, it's, uh, I was getting these uh, halos. Um, and that's what I was trying to catch with these few pictures here coming up. Um, I was trying to catch this halo. Um, now, too, again, I could have set my camera at different settings, which, you know, I, I do turn up the compensation exposure here and there to allow more light in to try to pick up that halo a little bit better that I'm seeing with my naked eyes. Um, and at times I I can't seem to pick it up and I don't know if it's uh, the compensation exposure or if it's uh, um, the exposure bracketing um, or even maybe the ISO. Um, you know, I'm, I'm still experimenting with these and, um, you know, by turning them up and down, I, I get a different image. So take that into consideration when you're filming or taking pictures of any bright object, even a light. You know, if you've got, uh, you know, moisture in front of it, it's going to cause, uh, you know, quite a reflection off that moisture. Um, and again, here, as I zoom in, you see that I get start getting detail because I am able to see right through those thin, dense clouds. I mean, less dense clouds. Those clouds that are in front of me are very, very thin. That's why a lot of times when you go out and you look at the moon and you see that halo, that's what it is. It's, it's, it's water molecules in the air that, you know, causes halo. 
Uh, just like getting out of a pool, you know, when you're swimming in a pool with a lot of chlorine, you look up at a light, and that light will have a big halo around it, a big glow. Well, almost the same principle, okay? Um, now, I should have moved this little thing over here because it's going to say, all right, yeah, well, this will work. Full moon, and here it comes. Actually, I got caught with my pants down. Um, this is... Uh, Day 14, uh, Thursday, January 12th, I was uh, actually shooting out toward where, you know, uh, toward the west, you know, picking up on the horizon line, uh, shooting a couple of boats out there. And then I said, oh, here comes the moon. Um, there were some clouds and I thought I was going to get blocked out this night, which I wasn't happy. But um, as you see, there's... Uh, the moon appearing because there was some clouds out there on the horizon um, obviously that you see um, blocking out the lower end so you no know, we I can't see out there to that certain point because um, again clouds are like a hill they're gonna block out what's behind it um, beautiful moon that night uh, this night um, there was another gentleman there filming with me. Um, he was using a can, and, and later on in the video, you'll hear. Um, I'll, I'll, I'm going to just let the, the sound run in the video that I took. I took several videos, uh, a couple time lapses. Um, so when I get to those, I'll just let them run and uh, uh, let you hear what I had to say that night about the moon. Uh, and then a total stranger come up and you know, was asking us what we were doing. You'll hear him talking to me in it. Um, but one of the things that I did notice uh, that when I did a full zoom on the moon, on the horizon, that it wasn't as big as it is when it's directly overhead. And that's another thing we need to start testing us flat earthers is for um, the size of that moon compared to as it rises straight directly above us. Okay, here comes my video and you can listen to what I have to say. Video here on it. When you video it, it looks like it's in water. <laughs> but there's a good reason behind that, right? What's between me or the camera and the moon? A whole hell of a lot of water molecules. Oh, yeah. What's that, fellas? How you doing? Hey. Uh, doing all right. How y'all? Good. Well, that's a pretty moon. Isn't it though? It's got some clouds in front of it right now too, though. Some thin, thin, less dense clouds. You can actually see it uh, on there. See the straight line? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't help. Well, hell, this, this is about like taking a picture with a potato. <laughs> I don't know, some of these cell phones get some hellacious video in there. Some good uh, pictures on it. My, my cell phone does. Well, I mean, they're, they're getting better and better. I mean, they're, they're basically going to just uh, do away with the point-and-shoot cameras because of them, you know. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a matter of time. But I always have a hard time getting them off my phone onto my computer. Yeah, sometimes that's a, a royal pain in the ass. Well, I found I found how to do it. Usually, um, when you plug into this and you plug it into your computer, it will automatically go to charging. You got to turn the charging part off, and then you can go to your videos or your uh, pictures and download them. That was my problem because every time I tried to do it, I was like, "Man, all my uh, phone's doing is charging." <laughs> downloading any pictures. No. Let me see. There's those clouds at the bottom of the moon. 
What kind of rigs you guys working with there? Oh, I got a Coolpix P900. He's got a Canon. My girlfriend, she's a photographer. She got some kind of badass Nikon. I don't know. Coolpix P900? This has got 83 times zoom. I, I couldn't even begin to tell you. It's, yeah. uh, it's a badass camera, but... Well, look at I here. It's about as much as a Hyundai. <laughs> look at my screen here, and I'll. Oh, I'll, right on. I'll do a. Um, you know, this is it's zoomed out a little bit, but if I do a full zoom. Oh, wow. I mean, you, <laughs> uh, if the craters were more prevalent, you don't really get to see the craters when it's a full moon as well as you do on like half moons, quarter moons. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. But still. <clears throat> Badass. Yeah, that's that's a heck of a zoom. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I catch the rings of Saturn with this camera. Nice. Which, at supposedly 746 million miles, that I question. <laughs> <laughs> I said, there ain't no way this camera's going that <laughs> far. <laughs> Just let it rise up in there. It will. I didn't realize the moon was coming up over here. I saw you all. I saw you over here photographing. I thought, well, that's right. Then you come running over here, and I thought, oh, yeah, shit. we were waiting for it. And I thought, ah, I seen a lot of clouds on the horizon when I was heading over here. And I said, nah, we're gonna get blocked out. No, here it comes. I thought, well, shit, he's missing the damn sunset. <laughs> and finally, <laughs> I looked up in the rearview mirror and saw it, and thought, well, okay. <laughs> yeah, the sun went down at uh, 6:02, I believe. Well, I call it but, going away. Yeah, but man, it's, it's, it's got, still got some pretty color in it. It's red out there. Oh yeah, that's why I took some pictures of it. I did a full zoom all the way out and then took a few pictures. And it's, uh, that's an awesome, this boat coming in. Yeah. I got him way out there too. Oh yeah, cool. Coming in, coming in. I, I do a lot of boat videos out here. Boat way out on the horizon. You can't see him with your eyes, but I can sure see him with his camera. <laughs> you know what? We're gonna take some more pictures. And we partner, good luck with her. Yeah, thanks a lot, yeah, man. Go back you have a good night. Some, uh, yeah, good night pictures. Um, I really do like the way the pictures come out. But you know, you also you know don't see that uh, the movement of the moon. Um, you know, you don't see that quivering around the edges as if it was in water. But you always, you do have to take that in consideration, you know, that uh, the air is got a lot of water molecules in it. And we, we breathe that water. Uh, I know in Florida here, when it's really, really humid during the summer and we um, say it just starts to rain, um, it really, um, really will get to you. Now here's a time lapse coming up that I did, and of course I I slowed it down like uh, point um, two five times, um, just to show you. Um, I, I wanted to show that these clouds right here, um, from the distance that I was at, um, these really did just look like a little sliver of clouds. Um, but later on, um, and you'll see it in some of my pictures. Um, as these clouds got closer to me, actually it was a big blanket of clouds. So what we see out in the distance is a sliver of clouds um, is actually a blanket. Why? Because of the angle that we're looking at that that uh, sheet of clouds. Um, I'm looking at it at a long distance, so of course it's going to look like a sliver. But as it uh, you know creeps up on you, and you can. Um, go out and experience that yourself, you know, on any uh, cloudy day, you know, if there's uh, um, clouds off in a distance, say little strips, and as they move towards you, you'll see how they'll open up and become, uh, you know, a blanket of clouds. Um, fortunately for me, um, it wasn't a, you know, forever blanket, but like I say, off in the distance, it, uh, it looked like, uh, just a sliver um, and these were some awesome pictures as you can see the the reflection of the light coming off the moon onto the clouds um, and it's more prevalent when I uh, pull further away from the moon 
and I got a couple pictures where I do pull away but you can also see how clearly these clouds are in front of it and the thin ones the thin less dense clouds you can see right through and see some of the detail of the moon um, yeah you have to look at the different density of the cloud um, as you're viewing it um, where you got the wider clouds they'll be more thin that you see here um, and you know this is uh, this is what we need to be looking at we don't need to be trying to explain uh, clouds behind the Sun and moon because you can debunk that with any high altitude balloon flight okay uh, now too <clears throat> I think I threw in a couple of pictures here of Sirius um, I caught just above these clouds um, I just took a few pictures of them just to show you all the the brightness of uh, Sirius and how you know zooming in on it at full zoom and taking a picture which the next one's at full zoom okay and you almost get the same effect how the glow of uh, the star itself is uh, glaring out around the edges and I go back to the moon and then I got another little video coming up here and I think I explained things fairly well in it so I will uh, again let my video speak for itself and uh, I spent a lot of time I spent a lot of time um, for these 14 days shooting the moon so I hope you appreciate it I don't want to do a little film in here No clouds going behind the moon yet. Go watch. Big long line of big old long sliver of clouds across the sky. I do believe the moon will, as it gets closer, will go above them.
like anything comes towards us gets closer goes above our heads common sense stuff no here let me just try to zoom in here so you can see this you see those clouds going in front of the moon I zoom back a little bit you'll swear some of them are going behind it but they're not you see the white ones they're very very thin clouds you won't see those because the brightness of the moon look at all them water molecules Why is it lighting up the top of the clouds? It's because it's higher than the clouds. Because it's beyond my perspective. So it just only appears to be behind those clouds that are between me and it. Turn my compensation turn exposure my compensation up and I almost turn the up. sky blue. Um, and here's that thin line of clouds that was out there. And like I said, when it came above me, when it actually uh, drifted over the top of me, it was a much longer line of clouds. And I think I even have some other pictures showing that. And there's Orion's belt. We got that in there, a couple of them. I um, thought that was pretty cool, catching Orion's belt, and you can see Beetlejuice there, red, pretty red uh, star, and here's even one a little closer. And that's something too, you know, when you see it off in the distance, it's turned on its side, and then when you see it, uh, you know, this time of year, it's to the south of me a little bit, it's, uh, standing straight up and that's because of this perspective the perspective where it's at in the sky and where you're at and which way you turn your body okay um and then here again i i start shooting at the moon and up up a little closer and then you can clearly see these whiter thinner clouds are what's lit up white and those are the clouds that the moon can actually shine right through and give the appearance of the darker clouds sometimes appearing like they go behind it. Um, and, you know, this is something that gets to me when I hear people telling me this. And here it is. There's that thin layer out there as it's creeping up on me. It, it's a big, long band. Uh, it's a wider band. But from a distance, it just looked like a little sliver of a cloud. Why? Because of the angle that I was on viewing it. It was much further away. Um, so again, you know, this is just perspective. And you can see how this horizon, and you can see the little city lights. Oh, here was a plane I caught way out in the distance, too. I took a picture of I was actually surprised I got the picture of it. Uh, then go back to the moon, of course. 
And I think I took a little break here to let some of these clouds go by, and then I started taking pictures again. I think it was a little bit of time in between. Let me look at my stamp. Uh, but you can see how its uh, its color has changed now. Um, it's not quite as orange. Okay. Um, so what causes that color? And I say, you know, maybe all that pollution that's <laughs> between me and the camera that's in the air too. Um, who knows? But you know, usually when it's lower on the horizon, it gives us that pretty orange color, um, or even almost a reddish color as it's coming up the blood moon look um, and then here's one further zoomed back away I think uh, I think there's a plane flying in this one too that you'll see it uh, um, fly by um, maybe that was in one of my other videos um, I think I did have a plane fly by and I don't even think I talked about it because um, I let it go silent I might go back and add words to it, but there is a plane in there, and you can see it just uh, to the right of the moon at the bottom, um, and the glare of the moon, of course, glares it out, and you don't get to see it, and of course, me zooming back and forth uh, didn't help either, I, I didn't even see it, I didn't even notice it, until I looked at uh, my videos. Now, a lot of times, though, too, when I am doing my pictures, I am looking above my camera. I'm looking at what I'm shooting at before I shoot it to see if it matches what I'm seeing in my camera. And a lot of times, it doesn't show me exactly what I'm seeing with my eyes by what I'm seeing with my camera. Okay? The camera's giving me a, a different image. Okay? And I believe the clouds, uh, there's some other clouds out here that start rolling in a little bit. And I do believe in between here, too. Um, yes, I went home. And this is from my house uh, out in my driveway. And I was just shooting up at the, showing you how the clouds are lit up with the ISO set up a little higher. Or the compensation exposure, excuse me, was put up a little higher. Um, so, there you go. And I am going to... Uh, quite possibly put on a little picture or a little video of the following morning um, on the 13th, Friday the 13th. I think I got up and uh, took a video of it or a time lapse of it uh, on the horizon. All right, well, here comes another little time lapse that I did uh, later that night. Um, and this is going to conclude uh, uh, day 14 on the full moon. And again, I did it like this. So you could really see those thin clouds getting through. And my camera didn't want to focus on the moon. It literally wanted to focus on the clouds. Uh, that's why the moon's kind of a little blurry. But, you know, you can obviously see how these thinner clouds are going in front of the moon. And if I had that ISO even turned up higher, it even makes some of these uh, uh, darker clouds look like they were going behind instead of in front of. Um, and, you know, that's that's one of the big things that I have an issue with is people making that claim. Again, like I said, high altitude balloons, not unless every one of them are fake. Uh, you never see a cloud in the sky that high. Never, never in any of those videos, you don't ever see a cloud as high as that balloon is. Every, all the clouds are well underneath it. And like I say, it's an illusion caused by the light of the moon and the light of the sun that makes it appear like these clouds are going behind it. So, again, I think uh, most of you will agree with that. If not, um, then you need to rethink it and watch some other videos. Now, if you like my video, like, subscribe, share. I don't care. Use parts of it if you like. Um, I don't own no copyright. Go right ahead and help yourself. Y'all have a good day. All right, I started taking this at 10:04 p.m. Um, when I this was when I was at home. 
Uh, I just completed a 10 minute time lapse of the moon. And what I want to do is zoom in on it here. Oh, people say clouds behind the moon. Well, these clouds are definitely going in front of the moon. And they're thin clouds. They're, they're not thick, thick clouds. They're enough to block out the stars because uh, I actually was doing a 30-second um, um, intervals of uh, Polaris. And uh, when this ended, now see these are thicker, denser clouds, and it's blocking out the light. It came in as uh, real thin clouds, and they keep getting thicker as the night's progressing. Um, so, you know, that's why I did the time lapse, because it might show where it appears to be clouds going behind it. But, you know, when you really, really examine it, and you really, really observe it, I mean, I've, I've been observing, doing videos. I know I haven't posted all these videos, but I've done a lot of videos on the moon. And I started uh, um, watching this go through its phase from, uh, you know, the new moon to the full moon. And um, yeah, I caught some pretty interesting things. Um, so as the clouds get a little thinner right there, you're able to see through it. And then here come some thicker ones. Uh, I'm only going to do a short little video here, but, you know, my main thing was just to show, basically, you know, how these clouds can appear to go behind the moon, but never going behind the moon. It's an illusion because of the density of the clouds. Other than that, um... You know, you can make all the claims you want, but if you actually go out and observe it and you have your camera set at the right settings, I mean, if you have your, um, too much light coming into the camera, it will look like that, or your exposure, um, it can cause that illusion to occur. I mean, you, you can watch right now and you can see that the density of these clouds are getting thicker, and that's why I'm going to stop filming because I can't, you know, I can't just sit out here and film uh, clouds. Uh, but, you know, that was, that was my main purpose, was to just show you the density of these clouds and how the lesser dense clouds, you'll be able to see right through them. And uh, because, well, you'll be able to see right through them around the moon. Okay? So uh, when you're looking right at the moon... They'll go over the moon and you won't see them, but um, they'll they'll appear to pop out on the sides of the moon, and that's where I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. They'll almost look like they're going behind the moon because they're coming out on the sides, but you won't see them going in front, and that's due to the light of the the sun or the moon. I always get <laughs> the sun moon, uh, but you know this this is my way to find out is by observation. And the more I observe it, okay, the more I see that it, it's it's an illusion. And even right here, um, it's in a little bit of an opening, but I'm going to show you these clouds going over the moon, going in front of the moon. Now I did. I have my uh, compensation exposure turned all the way down to minus two. So that way, I'm not getting glared out or blinded by the light of the moon. So this way, you can actually see them. And you can see the little clear spots that pop in and out, too, where the, the clouds aren't quite as thick. <clears throat> and, you know, when I zoom back out, you know, you'll start getting this, uh, <clears throat> you know, appearance, like right there. These clouds will appear to go, you know, be going behind the moon. But a simple 
it'll zoom in on it and you will see that these clouds are actually going in front of it okay so you know all these people uh, flat earth people are you know I don't know if they're getting mad at me but you know because I'm not agreeing with you know this illusion of the clouds going behind the moon and the sun um, they're arguing with me telling me I'm not seeing you know um, I'm being blinded or I'm not seeing but I, I say they're being blinded by the light um, saying the Sun is even worse because it is much brighter of course um, and, and that will even make more of an illusion of clouds going behind the, the moon or the Sun and you know again I said it in another video if you want to contest this you find me any high altitude balloon flight that even shows a cloud as high up as, you know, some of them are going up 100,000 feet, um, you know, 120,000 feet, um, and all different heights. So, you know, when you look at those, and if you can present me with a, a video of a high altitude balloon flight showing clouds that high up, maybe I'll take this under consideration and somebody says oh you'll never get one well of course I'll never get one showing it okay because it ain't happening <coughs> there's illusions and then there's illusions illusions to trick you into believing some of what science says and then there's illusions that fake us all out when we look at it on a video um, and, and that's where you know the illusion of uh, boats going over the curvature of earth that is an illusion um, and if you go out and observe that too as much as I have um, and I every time I watch uh, my boat videos I'm seeing more and more in them and the more I see the more I try to reveal um, of how this is happening uh, why it's happening diffraction, uh, the bending of the light, um, bending up over the boat, cutting the boat off at the bottom end, and, you know, um, angular resolution, you know, you're, you're on this, uh, you know, again, you're looking like down through a long, long tunnel, but the tunnel you're looking in has no walls, it's the sky and and uh, the water as the floor the sky is the ceiling and the water is the floor so when you're looking down that tunnel you're not really seeing the the true horizon line and um, I, I plan on doing a video um, but I do need the clouds during a sunset um, so I can show you the mirroring um, off the clouds uh, or off the water or the clouds uh, being mirrored okay and that will show you the true horizon line and the other thing I want to do is show you that with my camera on as level as I can get on a full zoom out um, I think I can put a small level on my camera uh, use my little GoPro camera to show you that the level is on the camera and then also show you these uh, clouds in the distance being mirrored off the water. Um, now, is that being diffracted light? It very well could be. It could be that um, the clouds are being mirrored off to the water molecules in the air. And that's what I think happens. Um, and these water molecules will actually bend the light upward this is why some people believe in the concaved earth you know that we're living inside the earth because they see it curving upward so they think we're living inside and everything's curving around us and we're inside this ball and not on the plane not in the plane of existence I call it the plane of existence and we're living in that plane of existence now another way here here's another way to find out whether or not the moon um, actually rotates if you take 
your tripod and instead of turning your tripod as the moon is moving just tilt your tripod or tilt your camera to where you can you know actually get the moon in it but use your tripod to bend the camera from you know being forward to upside down as it goes over the horizon um, and I'm gonna try that too one day um, and again I'm gonna have to use a GoPro camera to show you how my cam my camera set up and show you how I'm doing it um, and then other people can try this and see if they get the same results now I haven't tried it but I think about it as I see it in front of me here and then when it's behind me it's like upside down but you gotta think that it's still right side up it's still the same way you've seen it it's just on the other side of you so if you take your camera and just work it all the way up until it goes upside down then you might be able to um, prove that what I'm saying I, I mean and I don't know if if I'm if I can even prove that but you know again if I move my camera and turn my camera you'll never notice it I mean you'll you'll swear to God that it's uh, it's rotating now it very well could be but I'm saying this is a good way to test that test that theory okay well I've been out here long enough and I think you can get my drift um, geez, oh, that's almost 12 minutes um, so I'm gonna stop the camera now and here yeah, I'll zoom back out and I'm gonna stop the camera and show you that all of this is just it's an illusion I think the whole world's an illusion we all might be an illusion <laughs> who knows all right have a good night I threw in a couple of pictures of the next morning at 6.49. A um, couple of minutes, a few pictures here of the moon setting in the west. All right, again, um, I do hope you all uh, enjoy and like uh, my presentation of the moon. And it's going through its phases. Yes, I probably could have done it a little bit differently, but I am a working man, and I don't. I don't have just all this time to just spend just taking pictures all day long and uh, well for two weeks all right so again like subscribe um, share them use them take what you want and uh, I hope it helps in one way or another um, and uh, always remember them clouds are always in front of the moon they just give you the illusion that they're behind the moon. All right, again, thank you for watching, and have a good one. Good day, good evening, and a good night.